Welcome back to the game development for Windows Phone tutorial. In today's episode we're going to expand on our Mango Lander game once again by working on the fuel mechanic, drawing some basic text to the screen and laying the foundations for a menu system. I'm going to be doing something a little bit different in today's episode. The code we have currently is reasonably abstracted into classes, but a lot of the code in our game class assumes that we are only ever in the playing state, which can only get us so far. So when we want to in introduce menus and so on, things quickly become more complicated, uh, and I've decided to preempt some of that complexity by moving code down into lower level classes and creating a few interfaces to make things easier. Because of the sheer amount of refactoring that I ended up doing, I'm not going to talk you through all of the steps, rather I'm just going to show you the end product and explain at a high level some of my design decisions. I probably won't use this technique too many more times if I can help it, as I'd rather keep things uh, so you can follow them like a tutorial, but today's episode will be the exception. If you don't follow everything, then don't worry, you can simply download the code from today's episode at the link in the description below. First things first. Uh, the key scenario that I wanted to support with the refactoring was being able to handle state better, in particular switching between playing and being in a menu. So the first thing I'm going to point out is that I've expanded our game state enumerator to include a menu state, uh, and I've created this new enumerator uh, to store the specific uh, type of menu that we're in currently. This leads into the first set of changes that I've made uh, to the main game class. First you'll notice that I've created a new object here of type menu manager. I've also stripped out stuff related to the lander, but we'll get to that in a second. One big change that I've made is that I've added switch statements into a few methods that differentiate the current behavior based on whether we are playing or looking at a menu. Uh, for example, here's the update method. I've broken a lot of the logic out, uh, and this method now looks a lot simpler, as you can see. So if we're in the menu state, then we call interact and then update on the menu's object. Uh, and if we're playing, we call the same two methods on level. Likewise, uh, in the draw method, as you can see here, uh, when we're in a menu, we call draw on the menu manager, otherwise we call draw on the level. This makes the game class a lot easier to follow, and we can delegate the actual updating and drawing to the correct places. You'll notice that the method names are consistent here. Uh, this is because I've created interfaces that define what these interactions should look like. For example, here is iRenderable. Uh, this defines what uh, the interaction should look like for an object that can be drawn to the screen. Um, while iInteractive allows touch input to a given class, um, as well as uh, handling buttons. If we look at our level class, for example, this actually implements all four interfaces, um, while something like main menu is just renderable. Coming back to the level class, <clears throat> you'll notice that this is where I'm now keeping the lander object. And things like the lander texture, thruster, and gravity have all moved into the lander class. The reason I did this is to make each class reasonably specialized and break them up into smaller chunks that are easier to understand and manage. Apart from the menus, I haven't actually added a whole lot of code here, it's mostly just been shifting things around and updating variable names. Speaking of menus, let's take a look at how they work. Essentially there's a single menu manager class that contains a reference to a number of different menu objects. Similar to the new game class, uh, there's switch statements that pass messages down uh, to the respective menus, such as update and draw here. Let's take a look at intro as a simple example. I just wanted a plain image to show up that disappears when clicked and moving on to the next state. So as you can see, this is pretty straightforward to achieve. In my draw method, I'm drawing intro texture. It takes up the whole screen um, from the top left corner to the bottom right corner. Um, and then uh, in the interact method, we check for a touch. Um, and if there's a touch, we update the current menu state to be menu state.main. Notice that this is passed by reference, so that if I update the menu state here, it is reflected back in my menu manager. 
Then the next time this gets called, we will end up drawing the main menu instead of the intro. Hopefully this makes sense. I didn't have time to implement an actual menu in this episode, so I took a very similar approach with the main menu here. I render a different sprite to the screen, and this time if the screen is touched, I set the state to playing. Then you'll notice in my menu manager, I update the main game state to active if the menu state was set to playing. Let me show you what this looks like quickly. Let me run this here. So first of all you see the intro screen, then when I click you get shown the dummy menu that doesn't actually do anything, uh, and finally I click again and we're in the game, just as you might expect. Anyway, that about wraps up the refactoring. To finish up, I'm going to implement the fuel mechanic. So first let's go into our lambda class and declare a constant variable that will uh, define how quickly we use fuel. Later we could maybe set this with some kind of difficulty setting or vary it over time. So private const, it's going to be a double fuel use rate and for now I'll just set this to 5. Now in our update code, let's update the fuel property of our lambda. All the way down here. Uh, so if uh, the thruster is active, then oops, then this dot fuel minus equals uh, the total elapsed seconds uh, times the fuel use rate, like so. Of course, this isn't going to be much use to us unless we can actually see it on screen in some way. So I'm going to cover one way that we can draw text to the screen. Um, in XNA, we need to declare a font resource similar to how we set up a sprite. Um, you'll see I've already got a sprite font set up here in my Mangalanda content project, but let me create a new one uh, just to show you how it looks. Um, so you create a new sprite font and you get this uh, lovely file here and you can set up pretty much any aspect of the font so change the font name, uh, the size of the font and so on. Let me just uh, remove this again. Now let's set up code to actually use this font. So in our level class we'll create a new property uh, called UI font. It's a sprite font, oops, font UI font, like so, and then this gets initialized in our load content method of our game class. Oops, uh, level.ui font, content.load, sprite font. And it's under fonts UI. Once we have all of this in place, actually drawing text to the screen is surprisingly easy. So let's take care of this in our level class. I'm going to draw it after everything else um, so that it's always on top. First, we start up our sprite batch. Let me just make a comment here draw a UI text. So we uh, begin. Uh, sprite batch. Note that you could use uh, an already open sprite batch if you wanted. Um, mine just happens to be closed right now. Then we simply call draw string on the sprite batch. Pass it our font. Um, we're going to pass it a string to draw. Uh, in our case, I'm going to format it nicely. So we'll say fuel, uh, some variable in this format, uh, and pass the lander fuel value we draw it uh, at let's say 2020 and the color is going to be color dot white like so and then finally we call end on our sprite batch again and that's it let's uh, run this thing and see how it all looks Again, we get our intro, we get our placeholder menu, and now you'll notice there's fuel up the top left. And if I uh, apply my thruster, then the fuel goes down, just as you might expect. 
Thanks for watching. As always, there's a link to the code for this episode in the description below. Subscribe to keep up to date with new episodes and post a comment below if there's something in particular that you'd like me to implement next. Thanks and I'll catch you next time.